as the con- conversation unfolded in the tranquil setting of Rishimuk, Tarun questioned with reverence, How, venerable sage, may I comprehend the dilemma of my father? The sage, with an air of wisdom, responded, My dear prince, your father's intention stems from a desire to protect his lineage while you seek the preservation of the realm's security. Entering the battlefield will indeed prove perilous for the nation's safety. He continued, Fundamentally, my prince, you are yet young and inexperienced. Though valiant to confront formidable adversaries, however, I am prepared to accompany you and advice on your actions. The king, taken aback by the sage's words, hesitated momentarily. Before expressing his concerns, the king may issue commands and offer assistance in matters of governance, but he cannot impose his will upon his sons personally. If indeed Venerable Rishi Nandan and Sage Sanat find an alternative route, it would be beneficial. I am content with the well-being of your sons. However, he added, my sons are destined to be kings in the future, and I cannot deny them the rightful path to their destiny. Truly, entrusting the kingdom to a more developed individual is crucial, and this responsibility lies with the mentor. As a parent, you must have unwavering faith in them. The king's words resonated with resolve as a continued, yet as a father, I have the authority to ensure the progress and welfare of my descendants. To this, the sage replied with calm clarity. But being a father, you risk indulging them excessively in luxury or granting them excessive authority, both of which hinder the growth of young minds. Therefore, share the responsibility of your children's development with the mentor. Mentors liberate from weaknesses that lie within the parent. In the midst of the king's dilemma, a thought occurred to him, prompting, prompting him to believe that he could easily persuade his sons and resolve the difficulty in his favor. He, said, he stated, I love my sons dearly, but I have granted them the freedom to choose any path they desire. Thus, I respect their autonomy. Hence, I understand their wishes. With a sense of astonishment, the elder prince calmly responded, I appreciate your invitation. But before consenting to the journey, I wish to inquire about something. Why, sage, I seek your guidance on the subject of universal salvation. If the soul is omnipresent, existing everywhere, then why destroy one part to save another? Is it not an act of cruelty? The sage, known for his profound wisdom, began to elucidate the fundamental principles of life and the struggles that accompany it. He delved into the essence of life and love, engaging in a thought-provoking discussion with the questioning prince. The dialogue extended beyond the mortal realm as the highest deity Lord Sri Ram was invoked, and the revered sage Vasista expounded upon the topic with wisdom encapsulated in more than 12,000 verses of the sacred text. The Mahagyan Yoga Vasista, love the sage elucidated, is a beautiful river flowing between two banks. The first is devotion and the second is alignment. Devotion is transformed by faith, alignment is transformed by reason. However, the special feature of love is that it transcends reason and life. He concluded with a profound message, laugh in times of adversity, but it is the same time to laugh but contemplate in times of prosperity, for it is the same time that prevents you from drifting away from life. Your body belongs to the elements, your wealth to others, your life to desires and your soul to divinity. What remains within you? Nothing, exclaimed the sage, and that is the ultimate realization. Jai Gurudev.